Okay, so my original plan was to fix my hair and get all nice and, you know, my makeup done and all that stuff so that I could, you know, look somewhat put together for this video. But um, I felt sort of led to start a YouTube channel essentially just telling my story and documenting my benzo taper. Um, when I was, so I'll just, I guess, basically start by sharing how I even got on them in the first place. Um, so when I was a, um, a senior in high school, I started having really, really bad panic attacks randomly out of nowhere. Now, of course, anxiety was not foreign to me. I had had it at three years old. Um, I would have really bad emetophobia, which is like fear of vomiting. And um, at my, it kind of like, you know, would trigger panic attacks and things when I was a kid. But when I got older, it seemed to subside and kind of level out. Um, and when I got to be a senior in high school, for whatever reason, it came back, but like even worse than ever before. And I could barely go to school. I would go to school and I would have panic attacks and I would call my mom and I would go to the nervous's office and I would beg them to come take me home. It finally got to be so bad. The panic attacks were so intense that I would, um, I went to my family doctor and I was like, I can't, I can't go to school. I can't do this. I had a friend who had had some issues and she had to do um, something they call homebound, which basically means like you have a teacher come to your house and teach you at home. Um, the school, you know, if you get a doctor to approve it and sign off on it and whatever the school pays for it, the doc the teacher comes out and teaches you at home. So I told my doctor, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And he, um, he, wrote the note and I was on homebound. Um, after about three or four months into that, I was like, I'm not getting any better. I can still hardly leave the house. I was terribly agoraphobic. I had a serious boyfriend at the time of years who um, I, you know, obviously at the time wanted to go out and hang out with and like do stuff with. It wasn't my desire to sit at home a 17 year old girl to sit at home through I mean I literally I missed out on so much stuff just being stuck at home so um but I think that I think that I needed you know cognitive therapy or um some maybe just a little bit of love and understanding definitely some spiritual healing um I didn't need to be medicated um because like I said you know that situation would come kind of in waves or has come in waves throughout my life. So, um, I finally broke down and I said, I need, I need to go to a psychiatrist. Um, and I remember this was back when that was still kind of a, a little bit more taboo. This was back in like 2011. So like, even back then it was even still a lot more kind of like, Oh, you're going to go to a psychiatrist. Whereas today it's like, everybody talks about therapy and you know it seems like everybody's on the prescription now I guess is what I'm saying um it's a lot more common so um I was like I, I can't do this I need to go see a psychiatrist because that was the only other that was the only other treatment that I knew of that I knew existed um so we went and saw a psychiatrist he put me on you know told me that I had a chemical imbalance in my brain put me on Celexa and um, he put me on a benzodiazepine called Xanax. Um, now he just prescribed a small 0.5 milligram as needed, which probably would have been fine. Um, but then I ended up going to a different psychiatrist years down the road. I'm 30 now. And, um, this, the second psychiatrist I went to was majorly an overprescriber. She, she, she prescribed medicine like you would not believe. My little brother went to her as well and he had like a list of medication as long as his arm that he was on. He went through psychosis trying to come off and it wasn't until that until he started getting better that I realized, like I, I honestly, like I thought he was like demon possessed or something. I was like, what the heck is wrong with you? You know, why are you acting like this? You don't understand why somebody would behave in such a way. Um, and when he got better, when he finally got better, he's like a completely different person now that his brain is healed and his nervous system and everything is healed. He's like a totally different person. Um, he's also a lot younger than me and I think in much better health. So he was able to heal a lot faster, but, um, I am now currently halfway through my taper and this has 
been the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I don't, I'm starting this channel because I don't know how I can go on and, and let this go to rest and not try to do something about it. These medications are so intense and they alter your brain chemistry and your nervous system in a way that can completely change who you are as a person. They can leave, if you, if you come off of them too fast, they can give you permanent neurological damage. If you are someone who is tapering right now, keep going, you can do this. I mean, that's what I'm having to tell myself anyway. Um, it helps to talk to others who have gone through it and have come out the other side because it is possible, healing is possible. But um, when you get to a point where you decide, I no longer wanna be on these medications, I would like to do this naturally. Unless you have thousands of, upon thousands of dollars to go see a holistic doctor, that's too bad. You are dependent upon Western medicine and the system that was put forth in place for mental illness in America. I've talked to people in Europe I've talked to people all over the world through this experience that are like, I'm so sorry for some of you guys in America because they have different systems over there. They said, when we get sick, we don't have to work, you know, like, um, and we get all of our medications paid for and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I am unable to get out of bed some days and I, I still have to work and I've been having episodes that. I guess you could, it, I use the word episode because I don't know exactly what's happening to me. Um, it would be real easy to just chalk it up as a panic attack, but it's more than that. Like I, um, I'm a waitress and I had, um, a couple nights ago, I went to work and I had, um, a four table section, which means I had four tables in my section that I was responsible for. And I got, um, all four of those tables sat down at once. So I went from having no tables to having four with one of them being a table of eight and three being tables of two. So I went from having no people to take care of to 14 people. And while I was feeling a little off and like shaky, I'm so used to like naturally being anxious that I was like, okay, I can still do this. I got this. I'll talk myself through it. And I started attempting to, even though I felt like on pins and needles and like I was going to seize or something. I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. But what happened was I'd go up to the tables, like ready to take an order, and my hand would be too shaky to write down the order. My thoughts, literally, it's like my brain shut off. It's like that old Windows 95, dun -dun -dun -dun. it's like it literally did that. Like it was like, dun -dun -dun -dun. and then no thoughts. I can't think, it was like my mind just went completely blank. And um, you, can't, you can't do that when you're serving. You have to be on top of your stuff. And I like my job, like I enjoy what I do. When I'm in a good headspace, like it's, it, it's a job that I, I kind of, you know, I do enjoy. Um, it's, it's a very hands-on job. It keeps you focused because you have, you know, all these tables and this person needs this and, and you have to stay in like the flow of like focusing on, okay, like this table needs this and that table needs that. And it, it keeps you like, and time just flies. Like when, when I am busy at work, I'm not sitting at a desk, like time just flies because of how much you have to do and how engaged your mind has to be. So up until this point, and I had another, like I say, episode, because again, I don't know if that's, that was simply a panic attack, a fight or flight response, or if it's that my nervous system is just that jacked that, you know, I really don't know exactly what's happening to me when I have that kind of a moment. But, um, the first episode I had was a couple months ago at work. And I thought that that was blood sugar because there had been a night prior that I had been feeling kind of similar symptoms and I drank some orange juice and felt a little better. So I thought maybe my body's having a hard time regulating my blood sugar because that's, you know, one of the things like your body, when you start taking these medications, when you start taking these chemicals, it takes your body from homeostasis into a different state. And your body has to find a way to rebalance itself because our bodies are in homeostasis. Like, they have to maintain a constant state of homeostasis. It's, it's, it's a 
very imperative, important thing um, that your body has a stable state that it's in. And when you start to disrupt that delicate balance by taking a chemical medication, and then you try to come off of that chemical medication, especially if you've been taking it for years on end, and also depending on how high your dose is, it has now, because your body has had to get used to this new normal. Your body has had to get used to, I'm no longer just a body. I'm now a body that also has three milligrams of Xanax going through me every day. Or, you know, you know, for me, it was Celexa, Lamictal, you know, it could be Prozac, whatever it is that you're on. Your body has now had to readjust to having that chemical supplemented all the time. And then what happens when you try to take it off is your body is desperately trying to find a state of balance and it has a really hard time doing that. And what I'm learning through this taper is that there are literally like so many unknown factors that can, can affect this. There's so many, there's so many different things you can do. So like for me, what I think triggered my most recent episode at work, which was this past Thursday, today's Saturday, was um, actually really bizarre. I took a B vitamin. Um, I was a prior alcoholic and I've been sober for one year off alcohol. And you know, alcohol depletes your vitamin B1, your thymine. And I was um, doing some research one day on the internet and I came across something that talked about um, different deficiencies that cause diseases. So like, for example, scurvy is a vitamin C deficiency. And that's literally it. That's literally it. The person is dying because they don't have enough vitamin C. Okay. That's why back in the day they said, let, let food be your medicine, right? Because back, back in the day, they didn't always have the resources to have all the nutrients and foods, you know, that they needed. So there's people that literally died just because they didn't get enough nutrients. So anyway, back to what I was saying, I found there's a name for the vitamin B1 deficiency, and that can also kill you. Um, if you are vitamin B1 deficient for too long, you can actually die of that. So I started looking into the symptoms for that, um, and I had a lot of the same symptoms. So I thought maybe taking B1 will help me. So I had this 500 milligram B1 supplement and I popped one of those before I went to bed on Wednesday night. And then Thursday morning, I felt like better. I thought, wow, I feel better. Like I don't feel as, like there's certain symptoms with low B1, like pins and needles. Um, what were the other symptoms? Um, I can't think off the top of my head right now. So that's also part of the benzo taper thing is your memory is like non-existent. Um, so there is some, um, there's a whole lot of symptoms with the B1 deficiency. So I was like, oh, and this, and this one could potentially be serious. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take some B1. So I took, you know, 1000 milligrams or sorry, one, or maybe it was grams. No milligrams, 1000 milligrams of vitamin B1 in less than 24 hours. And, uh, I met a really nice gentleman online who was telling me that, um, taking those kind of vitamins can literally trigger your central nervous system, which makes perfect sense because that's the only thing I've changed between now and last week. And I was feeling fine last week. A lot of people I've talked to online say like when you get, um, you know, when you're tapering, you can have what they call a window where you feel really good for a while. Like a couple of weeks has gone by and you're like, wow, I've, I feel fine. I think I'm getting better. And you get really encouraged and you get really happy and you're like, yay, like I'm getting better. And then all of a sudden it's like your body flips a switch and it's no longer okay. And I don't mean it's not just not okay. Like, I mean, like you literally feel like you're losing grasp of reality. And the sad thing about all of this is if, if I, if I didn't have my family to support me and take care of me, they just drag you to a psych med or a psych ward and put you on more psychiatric medications. So you will essentially be stuck being a zombie for the rest of your life. And for any of you naysayers, look what happened to Britney Spears, okay? I'm sorry, maybe that girl, that girl shaved her head and stuff, but like she was literally, I don't think any anybody who's like a naysayer towards her probably could take half of the crap that she went through. Um, and there's been so many famous people who have gone through that and they start taking those drugs and they're never the same. 
they always seem crazy because the drugs make you even more crazy. I don't care what anyone says. It literally makes things worse. I, I mean, I know some people who have taken some at low doses that work for them. And if you're one of those people, I'm happy for you. I'm not coming for you. I, I'm glad that that works for you. Awesome. If you're, I heard a lady say one time, she said, I feel like we need informed consent for these medications. And informed consent means you are informing someone of every single thing that could possibly go wrong. So that means you should tell that person if you're going to be the one prescribing. If you take this such and such medication at such and such dose for such and such amount of time, you may never be able to get off of this medication. And if you do, the side effects will be absolutely unbearable. Like so unbearable that you are barely able to function. Are you cool with that? And if that person is like, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm cool with if I have to take this medication for the rest of my life. 100%, that is informed consent and you are more than welcome to make that choice for yourself. But I didn't get that choice. Nobody told me, like I, I thought that as long as you took something by, as long as you took something as prescribed by someone in a white coat, you were fine. I didn't know that, that these medications were so poisonous. Um, it just, it, it's, it's by far the hardest thing I've done in my entire life and I'm not even halfway done. So I made this channel to share my story and to share what I learned along the way. And maybe just maybe this might help somebody else because knowing what I'm going through and knowing that there's people out there that don't have families that don't have anyone to support them, who even get told by their doctor, oh, you're crazy, you can't even be. There was a guy who said he, he was telling about his symptoms to a doctor and the doctor literally said, well, that's impossible. Okay, no, it's not. Cause he obviously, he feels like that. He has that symptom and the doctor's like, oh, well, that's impossible. And he's like, um, no, <laughs> that's how I feel inside. And Dr. Ashton, She's a lady who uh, came out in, I believe the late 90s or early 2000s, and she had tapered successfully several people off of benzodiazepines by a method that is now known as the Ashton Method. And she made a speech and she said, I think listening to patients has become a lost art. And I was like, that is so on point. Like you come to a doctor and you're like, this is how I feel. This is what's going on inside my body. These are my symptoms. And they're like, oh, you should be fine. That doesn't make sense. Like, wh why don't you just listen to the person in front of you and what they're telling you and what they say is going on inside their body? Why would you dismiss how they're feeling? Why would you, oh no, you can be, well, clearly they say they are having these uh, experiences and they are having this symptom. Why would you dismiss that? Um, it's just, it's a really cold, cruel world out there. And I, um, I am so so bothered by this the fact that no i mean i'm probably gonna have to lose everything i um year before last before i knew how hard this taper was gonna be or if i was even gonna quit taking benzos i didn't even realize how much it had affected me um i bought a car and i got a bunch of credit cards and i was making decent money at the time waitressing so i racked up my credit card and didn't even think about the fact that if I all of a sudden lost my job or got injured or, you know, whatever, I have all these bills that if I'm not working steady, I can't pay. Like, it's not smart to, like, not have a savings and rack up a bunch of debt. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that, people. I literally have had to learn that the hard way so many times. So now, if I'm unable to work pretty soon, what's going to happen is I'm going to lose everything. And my credit's going to be trashed for seven years. Not because I don't want to work, but because I physically cannot and the the system they don't they're not going to give anybody disability especially especially not if you're not doing the treatment the way that they want you to they they want you to be on medication period that's the way they think that that that's the way they believe we should be treating this and there's so many doctors who have come out over the years and said we don't need to be treating people like this we need to be doing things naturally and integrate natural medicine with you know, more modern medicine. And those doctors get demonized and blacklisted. Some of them even jailed. I mean, I don't know if, about if it's benzodiazepines specifically, but I do know there was a man who 
supposedly got jailed for talking about certain things that cure cancer. I mean, think about it. If everyone who was sick with cancer was suddenly healed, there's a billion dollar industry that would no longer be a billion dollar industry. Think about that. They make money off of you when you're sick. They make money off of you when you're unwell. If you're doing well, they don't profit. <laughs> so if a doctor comes out and says, hey, I have a cure for cancer, there's people, I don't, I don't care what anybody says, who would rather make money than just Debbie out a cure for cancer. And if you're one of those people that has faith in the government and in the gatekeepers, um, there will come a time when you finally figure out they are not on your side. They do not care about you. They only care about money and themselves. And we've, a lot of us have had to come to this realization on our own in some sort of separate way. Um, and if you're one of the people who hasn't come to that conclusion yet, or you're mad at me for even saying this, I'm sorry. Um, I promise you, you will eventually get to the point where you realize the people in charge do not care about us. We're like freaking heads of cattle to them. They don't, they don't care. They want their money, period. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to keep making videos as I go on. Um, I was going to, like I said, I was going to like do my hair and try to like be more presentable for my first video, but, um, I have gone through hell and back today and yesterday and the day before and I just had so many thoughts and so many like feelings I wanted to get out that I was like I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like who cares like this is what I look like whatever um I've been steady losing my hair since I started this can't I can't hardly I mean it doesn't really I mean it grows longer than my shoulders but it thins out after that like it really only grows like to my shoulders and like it's just it's it's been absolute hell. So if you're someone who's out there going through this, you're not alone. You're more than welcome to comment and chat with me. I would love to um, love to make new friends and get to know some other people that are going through this as well. And we can encourage each other. I'm in different chat rooms and things like that, talking to people. And I've learned a lot. And I will, I'm going to start making videos and sharing things that I'm learning along the way. And, you know, if this is something that is meant to grow... I'm a believer in God. I am a I am a um, born again believer, and I believe God has a plan, and I believe God has a reason for me going through this, and I believe that the reason for that is to help other people that are going through this because this is one of those things that, if you've not been through it yourself, you have a hard time understanding it. You're like, why are you acting so crazy? Just calm down. Why can't you just calm down? Because the person's nervous system is damaged. Their brain is damaged. It's not a matter of just calm down. They are physically and, and, and mentally literally injured. So it's very hard to understand. And a lot of people lose friends and family members and they have people that never want to speak to them again just because of how hard they are to be around when they're coming off of these medications. So if you have a family member who's experiencing this, please, please, give as much grace as you possibly can and then give even more than that. Because you, if you're the family member and you're not the one who's actually going through this yourself, please, I'm telling you, please give that person as much grace as you possibly can. Because trust me, you do not want to feel what that person is feeling. If that person's emotions are upsetting you or they're getting loud or they're getting obnoxious because they're getting upset, I get it, trust me, I get it. But like, just know, that's not the person that's that's their nervous system like literally being damaged so just try to have as much grace and patience as you can um and yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say for today for right now i can't really think of anything else i want to cover in this particular video right now so um yeah um like i said comment if you are someone who's going through this um i would be more than happy to chat with you and um yeah, God bless. If you're going through this, you can get through this. We will get through this together. And I hope just like the situation with Mr. Sackler, we can have, you know, what's the right word? Vindication and justice for what has happened. This is literally a crime against humanity. Period. I don't care what anyone says. So, all right. God bless everybody. I will be back shortly with another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.